everybody. John Van Dyke here from New Jersey Exposed. Today is Monday, November 8th, 2021. Time is 3.22 p.m. Yes, Jersey time. Okay, I noticed some of you people are getting a little bored of the Blue Zero Hero story, so we'll only give you the... We'll only go into depth with the real good ones. You know, the juicy ones, the child molesters, the child porn downloaders, the rapists, the... the the, the women beaters, I'm sorry, that's pretty much all of them, isn't it? Well, anyway, so there's been a lot of stories out here with bad cops since the last video I put out, which is, I don't know, a week and a half, two weeks ago, that there's so many, I'm not even going to do individual videos on it. I'm just going to run down, read the headlines, and get on to the next one. So, the first one, I, I'm just going to show you, look... These are all Blue Zero Hero stories. I'm not making this shit up. They have been active. Okay, first one I got here, it reads, uh, let me get it up. Former officer gets 35 years, 35 years sentence for hitting five kids with cars. There it is. I'll just read real quick. We'll see what's going on with that. A Polk County, this is in Florida, for a law, um, 35 years for a law enforcement officer has been sentenced to 35 years in prison for hitting five children at a Polk County bus stop last year. John Camfield, 49 at the time of, of the April 2017 crash, learned his sentence Thursday after an emotional day in court. According to law enforcement, Camfield's blood alcohol count level was twice the legal limit when he hit five Dundee Ridge Middle Academy students walking on the shoulder of the road. Oh, Jaheim Robertson, 13, was killed. Canfield, who was an Autumn Bond resident, pleaded no contest, DOI manslaughter, and vehicle homicide. He served, he served several years for law enforcement agency in Mississippi. Oh, listen to his excuses here. During his son's hearing, Canfield listed a slew of medical issues to the judge. He said the crash wasn't a case of drinking and driving, but a medical issue. He apologized to Heen's family, but he never admitted to drinking and driving. He said he had no recollection of the crash. Well, how about that? He's got amnesia. Okay, this one is dated uh, October 7, 2021. This is on the DailyBeast.com. School cop who, sh who shot teen is fired as police open homicide probe. The day after 18-year-old Mona Rodriguez, who was shot by Southern California... Ay, ay, ay. Uh, ...who was shot by a Southern California school safety officer last week was taken off life support. The Long Beach Police Department announced that it is investigating the incident as a homicide. Yesterday, October 6, 2021, Manula... Mona Rodriguez, who was struck in the upper body in a shooting incident on September 27, 2021, has come to her injuries. The department said in a statement released Thursday, in light of this news, detectives are now investigating this matter as a homicide. A Long Beach Police Department spokesman confirmed to the Daily Beast that an investigation is underway but could not provide a timeline for completion. The announcement followed Wednesday's firing by the Long Beach Unified School District of the officer involved, Eddie F. Gonzalez, for violating district policy on the use of force, Superintendent Jill Baker said at the news conference. After our internal review, we clearly saw areas where the employee violated district policy and did not meet our standard and expectation. Baker told reporters, we believe the decision to terminate this office employment is warranted, justified, and quite frankly, the right thing to do. This is reported on October 20, 21. Uh, this is on uh, in, uh, rawstory.com. And it reads as follows. Indiana cop arrested and charged with having a sexual relationship with a 16-year-old girl. Well, isn't that nice? And there's a picture of him right there. Take a good look at his face. Likes him young. Just like the rest of the perverts. Cops. All right, let's see if we can find out what he did here. An Indiana police officer has been charged with alleged sexual misconduct involving 16-year-old WNDU reports. This 
Tuesday, South Bend Police Officer Timothy Barber was charged with six counts. Six counts include child seduction, a level five felony, child seduction, a level five felony, public indecency, a class A misdemeanor, official misconduct, a level six felony, public nudity. What the hell was he doing in the public nudity? Class B misdemeanor, official misconduct, blah, blah. These allegations are disturbing and have no place in SBPD or the city of South Bend, said Mayor James Moeller, Chief Koskowski, and SBPD will continue to work with partnering agencies and will move immediately to place this officer on unpaid leave until the conclusion of the legal process. We will also be dedicated to protect... Oh, here we go. Cop again. And we take all crap, blah, 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 blah. The officer was immediately relieved of duty two weeks ago when we were made aware of these allegations. Now that criminal charges have been filed, I will ask the Board of Public Safety tomorrow to place him on unpaid leave pending the criminal trial. This is reported on MidHudsonNews.com, stated October 18th. Former Monticello cop charged with tasing motorcyclists from moving police car. There it is. A former Monticello police officer has been arrested in charge of firing a taser from his moving police car at a moving motorcyclist without legal justification and provocation, causing the motorcyclist to lose control of his vehicle and crash. Didn't we have a similar story? Here in New Jersey or something, I think it was. They were shooting uh, the park guy, a park cop, or a regular cop, shot a guy on a, uh, a four-wheel drive, one of them little, uh, what do you call it? Those little quads, yeah. Sullivan County District Attorney Megan Galligan said Thomas Benjamin, 47 and never sink, has been charged with reckless endangerment as a felony and official misconduct and coercion as misdemeanors. The DA's office in Sullivan County Sheriff's Office conducted the investigation to events that occurred on September 18. Charges against Benjamin also alleged that he immediately and improperly took action in an effort to prevent a use of force investigation and potential investigation into his action. Sullivan County Law Enforcement Community has long held this member up, 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 up. Uh, Monticello Police Chief Rob Meir said his department conducted a use of force investigation during which Benjamin was suspended and ultimately resigned. Meir then decertified him as a police officer. Well, it looks like he hit somebody and shot somebody with a taser and then he tried to cover it all up. Well, another well-trained professional, huh, folks? Uh, this is reported on October 18, 2021. Laredo cop arrested on domestic violence charge. Boy, what a surprise. There he is. Can't wait to read the story. Oh, look, these pop-ups. They're so annoying. Can't wait to read the story to find out what, how this badge bunny fared. A Laredo police officer assaulted a woman over the weekend when he was off-duty, Authority said. That domestic incident was reported in the early morning hours of Saturday at a residence she left. She had left earlier that same morning. She stated that a person she knew had assaulted her, according to the police. Police identified the suspect as Juan Angel Leo, Leo Jr., 34, an LPD cop. She added that a verbal argument escalated to a physical assault. LPD Special Investigation Unit detective took over the investigation. Investigators said the woman had recorded visible injuries. A warrant to arrest Leo was approved after investigators presented the case to the district attorney's office. On October 17, Leo turned himself into the Webb County Jail and was, and was served with the pending arrest warrant, charging him with assault of a family <coughs> household member by impeding breath, breath or circulation and assault family violence. As per procedure, Officer Weagle, blah, 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 is on administrative reassignment, blah, blah, blah. Well, another badge bunny learned the hard way. Uh, this one's reported on The Hill, dated October 21st, 2021. California officer charged with assault after allegedly kicking teen during traffic stop. Wow, an officer kicking a teen 
Hmm, I wonder if he had handcuffs on when he kicked him. Here's the story right there. All right, let's find out. A police officer in Los Angeles County has been charged in connection to the arrest of a 16-year-old boy he allegedly kicked after the suspect had surrendered and was lying face down on the ground. Well, that's the only way they're going to hit anybody, right? You have to be in a, uh, in a vulnerable position in order for them to hit you, either face down and then they can stop on your head or with handcuffs. Ryan Felton... 35, a former officer of the Baldwin Park Police Department, was arrested and charged with two felony counts of assault. According to the statement released by the district attorney's office, Felton pleaded not guilty to the charges. On September 22nd, 2019, Felton reportedly assisted another officer in pulling over a vehicle in which the 16-year-old identified as Anthony Romero was a passenger after the driver allegedly failed to yield at a traffic stop, the lawsuit says. In a civil complaint, attorneys for the team said that a Romero exited the vehicle and began to run out of run out of fear after seeing Felton pointing his firearm through the police car window. Wow. You wonder why we have problems. After being chased on foot by Felton, Romero complied with the officer and laid down with his face to the ground, CNN noted, citing the civil complaint. It says that Romero was not resisting arrest and was not resisting and was not a physical threat and was unarmed with his firearm still drawn. Felton approached Romero and allegedly kicked him with force in the ribs and face. Felton later placed Romero in the police car and struck the teen in the face and body without being provoked. The lawsuit says, according to CNN, another officer witnessed the incident. Did not, did not intervene, the suit says. The civil complaint says the team reportedly left with a bruised face, cuts on his body, and shoe prints from the officers after he, they allegedly stomped at his legs and body in the police station. When the team's mother picked up her son, CNN noted that Felton handed her a citation and said her son was very lucky since he could have been shot. <laughs> yeah, right. Felton was released from duty and is no longer employed by the department after a criminal investigation, but I think. How many times have I said, and this comes from cops that I know who are retired, and this, came, this comes from one I know who worked in Newark, and he said to me, if we have to chase you, you're going to get a punch. And there you go. Just no more evidence of it. This is reported on abcnews.go.com. Dated October 21st, Minneapolis cop gets nearly five years in killing of 911 call. Jeez, you can't even call 911 without your life being risked. There it is. All right, let's find out. A Minneapolis police officer who fairly shot an unarmed woman, well, that's how they shoot anybody. You have to be an unarmed to be shot. Who fairly shot an unarmed woman after she called 9-11 to report a possible rape happening behind her home was sentenced Thursday to nearly five years in prison. The most the judge could impose but less than half to 12 and a half years he was sentenced to for his murder conviction that was overturned last month. Mohammed Noor, guilty, was initially convicted of third degree murder and manslaughter manslaughter in the 2017 fatal shooting of Justine Rustic Damon, 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 a 40-year-old dual U.S. Australian citizen yoga teacher who was engaged to be married, but the Minnesota Supreme Court tossed out Norris' murder conviction and sentence last month, saying the third-degree murder statute didn't fit the case because it can only apply when a defendant shows a generalized indifference to human life. Well, that's pretty much any cop that pulls out his gun to shoot you, right? They don't care. It's you or them. Not when the conduct is directed at a particular person, as it was with Demon. Judge Catherine Quaintance, who also presided at North's trial, granted prosecutors' request to impose the maximum sentence and state guidelines on North's manslaughter conviction, 57 months. In doing so, she brushed aside the defense request for 41 months, which is the low end of the range. With good behavior, North could be freed on supervised Released by next summer, the state prison website listed his anticipated release date as June 27th. 
Mr. Knorr, I am not surprised that you have been a model prisoner, Quayton said. However, I do not know any authority that would make that grounds for reducing your sentence, she cited Knorr, shooting across the nose of your, of your partner, endangering others the night of the shooting to hand down the stiffest sentence she could. Quayton also remarked that because neither side had sought a departure from the sentence, sentencing guidelines, she was unable to deviate from them. Nor, who was fired after he was charged, has already served more than 29 months in Minnesota. Inmates who behave well typically serve two-thirds of their prison sentences and remainder on supervised release. I'm sure he spent that time in protective custody. What, you call 9-11 and what happens? The cop shows up and how many stories have I done or do where a cop shows up and it end, the situation ends up elevating and escalating and ends up worse? This report on NBC Philadelphia.com is dated October 21st, 2021 and this uh, reported as follows. Philadelphia police officer arrested on child pornography charges. Is anybody surprised anymore? I'll tell you what, people. I don't think there's a month goes by, maybe a week or two goes by, before one of these stories pops up of a cop with child pornography. This really is the number one go-to thing that they like to do in their spare time is look at child pornography. There's the story right there. I don't single these stories out. I just, every day at work in the morning, I Google, see what cops have been arrested, and I just copy the link and send it to my email, and here we are. Okay, let's find out. A longtime Philadelphia police officer has been arrested and is charged with possessing child pornography. The city police department said Thursday, Officer William Watts Sr., who has served on the city police, wow, 32 years was taken into custody Thursday morning after FBI agents raided his home, police said. Watts will be suspended for 30 days with the intent to dismiss him from the police department, officials said. The FBI alleges Watts possessed and transmitted over the Internet images of child children being sexually abused, according to the police. He faces up to 40 years in prison. There's his face right there. Take a good look at him. That's another well-trained, dedicated, professional hero out risking our lives as he protects and serves the government and downloads child porn and, and uploads child porn. Yes, they're fine people, aren't they? Wouldn't it be nice to know, you, you know, your kid needs a cop and he shows up. Next thing you know, he's got his camera out taking pictures of it. Yes. And where's the outrage from uh, from the good police out there? The do-nothing good cops. Where's where's the outrage? I haven't, I haven't heard any outrage. You know, it's funny. I put these stories up, and I never get in. Nobody ever, I never get a cop that says, hey, I'm a good cop, and I don't like this crap, and cops like this sh should be in prison. You never, I never get, I've never gotten one. I, I get people to take, make attacks at me for putting these stories up, but I never get any do nothing good cops chime in and tell me how much they dislike what's happening. This is reported on uh, inquire.com and it's dated, uh, let's see what the date on this is. October 21st, 2021. It's been a busy October, end of October. Reinstated Philly cop fired for beating Dunkin' Donuts worker charged with a new assault. You know, you can't even work at Dunkin' Donuts for crying out loud. You know, probably one of the one of the tough jobs out there. I could never work at a Dunkin' Donuts. It's, it's too high pitched. It's too much you ever see the menu? It's too much going on. It's too much. Anyway, you show up, you're making coffee, you're serving donuts, and you get one of these social paths with a badge and a gun walk in and next thing you know you're getting assaulted. So let's find out what this hero did. On uh, Valentine's Day twenty fifteen Philadelphia police officer Joseph Marion was parked outside a Dunkin' Donuts in East Mount Airy when an employee accidentally lost control of a shopping cart he was using to salt the parking lot. The car bumped into Marion's Chevrolet Suburban. Marion went berserk, allegedly attacking the worker, wrapping his hands around the man's throat, then assaulting a woman who tried to intervene. Wow. And this guy's running loose out there with a gun? 
and keys to a car? Who signed off on this nut job? Unbelievable. It was just pure rage, the woman would later tell the Inquirer. Marion, then 39, was arrested and fired. The police department announced in November 2015 he pleaded guilty to disorderly conduct, engaging in fighting in a federal lawsuit filed by the store employee who was settled by the city for $5,000. See, he should have never have been... That money should come out of his effing pocket. And I, I'm assuming he must have been in uniform when this happened. Now, how, uh, how else could he, they sue him? But in December 2017... Marion, oh, here we go. Here's the blue line of bullshit. Marion was quietly reinstated after the fraternal order of police filed a grievance on his behalf because they don't feel any good bad cop should be let go from the job. So that's just, that's a good example of why you got bad cops on there, the union. Uh, in a settlement agreement, city officials agreed to reduce his termination to a suspension if he completed anger management and use of force training with the cities covering all costs of the training. He's a bad cop. Why do you keep him? There's so many idiots out there that want to be cops. Why would we, we as taxpayers, waste our money trying to correct this sociopath, this defect? All right, so on Wednesday, Marion was arrested again on charges of simple assault. Oopsie, I guess the anger management didn't work. It's all bullshit. You see, this, I, I don't want to get into detail on each individual in story, but this is a good example of what goes on, why we have bad cops, and why we can't get rid of them, because the system protects them, sends this guy to some kind of bogus training, what he needs to do so he doesn't do it again, he needs to get a good ass whipping, okay? Maybe somebody should shove a nice stick up his ass and slap him, kick, stomp his head and tell him next time you do something like this, you're going to get it twice as bad. He wouldn't remember that. All right. All right, he was arrested again on charges of simple assault, reckless endangerment, and disorderly conduct. Commissioner Daniel Law was, well, the name right there is guilty. Has, has suspended him for 30 days with the intent to dismiss at the end of the 30 days. So I guess he's going to get a paid vacation for 30 days before they fire his stupid ass. Marion allegedly punched a male in the mouth with a closed fist during an off-duty altercation in April. Police said in a statement, his gun fell to the ground during the altercation and was retrieved by a child that was on cloakation at the time. His, according to his statement, Marion did not point the weapon at the other man. Neighbors described him as screaming and out of control, according to a law enforcement source. It was unclear Thursday if the FOP would provide legal representation, blah, 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 blah. Uh, in 2015, Dunkin' Donuts incident that led to Marion's first firing, the woman who intervened, who in my opinion is a hero, Laura Godshaw, would later say she was shocked by Marion's reaction to the shopping cart rolling into his truck. He was like a bull in a china shop. He was red, raging, fist like Rrr, Gunshaw said, adding that Marion eventually turned on her, calling her a bitch and punching her in the face. I'm like, look at the chaos you're causing for no reason. There's no crime, Godshaw said. If he came up to you and put a knife to your throat, there, then yeah, I'd hope you'd defend yourself. But he literally tapped your car with a shopping car full of salt. All he's trying to do is his job. Godshaw was interviewed by the Inquirer in 2019 for a story on how Philadelphia police officers have often have their discipline reduced and overturned through the FOP arbitration process while officers arrest or terminations are usually made public by the police department. It does not announce when they later rejoin the force. It's just it's just another story of how bad cops are protected. This story is reported at abcnews.go.com. It is dated October 22nd, 2021. Minneapolis cop charged in a chase that killed innocent driver. There it is. Well, let's find out what he did. I did not read the story, just the headline. 
A Minneapolis police officer has been charged with manslaughter and vehicular homicide for a crash in July that killed an innocent motorist while the officer was pursuing a stolen vehicle. A prosecutor announced Friday Officer Brian Cummings was driving nearly 80 miles per hour in Minneapolis with his siren and lights activated when his squad car slammed into another vehicle, killing 40-year-old Lennial Frazier. Hennepin County Attorney Mike Freeman said in a statement, too bad he didn't kill the bad cop. The crash ended a chase that lasted more than 20 blocks, including th through residential neighborhoods where the post speed limit is 25. My question is, where were his commanding officers, the, the CEO that's in charge of that shift? Did he not tell them? I know around here. Now, I don't know how they're doing it now because they're prevented from new rules here in New Jersey, no more car chases. But the, prior to that, I know they used to get... If they were chasing a car, they would get on the rain and say, all right, I'm doing 40 miles an hour down South Street. Now I'm doing 55 down North Street, and I'm at 60, and he's heading towards the parkway, and then you'll hear the supervisor come over the rain and say, all right, uh, terminate the chase. We'll notify the parkway or whatever. So, and, and I'm all for this because... Your car got stolen because you left the keys near you. You did something stupid. Yeah, it's tragic and nobody wants to see your car get stolen, but I don't want one of these idiot heroes going 100 miles an hour, slamming into somebody or running somebody over, hitting somebody, hurting somebody, losing control. Ultimately, it's a citizen that gets hurt, not the cop. Uh, let's see. Uh, police are supposed to protect and serve. No, they're not. They're supposed to enforce laws. More propaganda. Police are supposed to protect and serve citizens and to act in a manner consistent with their sworn oath to do so. Officer Cummings' actions deviate from his oath and his negligence caused the death of Millennial Fraser. Freeman said, well, what about again? Where were the supervisors? If he had to get on the rain and say he's not stopping, I'm pursuing him. Uh, they're going to say, where are you at? We'll send some other cars over there. So I think they're doing damage control so that somebody else doesn't get in trouble. During Cummings' chase, Frazier's Jeep entered into an intersection on a green light, according to investigation, investigators. The driver of the stolen vehicle narrowly missed Frazier's Jeep before the squad car struck it on the driver's side. An accident reconstruction report said the fatal collision can be attributed to the defendant for failure to operate his vehicle with due regard for the safety of other motorists. Uh, Mayor Joseph Frey said Frazier's death that the city would review his pursuit policy and that review was still going. So you just had another idiot. Oh, let me read this. Officers shall not initiate pursuit or shall terminate pursuit progress if the pursuit poses an unreasonable risk to the officers, the public, or passenger. Well, obviously, he wasn't doing his job. Another well-trained, dedicated, absolutely dedicated professional. Remember, people, they are professionals, and they are heroes. They're out there risking their lives. No, our lives. <laughs> Another mistake. They're out there risking our lives as they protect and serve the government and drive like assholes. This one is dated October 27, 2021. It's a report on usnews.com. A two-year sentence for ex-cop in federal task force scandal. Well, let's find out what this fine, upstanding, well-trained professional did. A former Louisiana police officer and federal drug, drug task force member has been sentenced to more than two years in federal prison. Let me guess. Drugs? As out of New Orleans, a former Louisiana police officer and federal drug task force member has been sentenced to more than two years in federal prison. Court records show Rodney Gimar, Gimar was sentenced to 27 months in U.S. District Court uh, by U.S. District Court Judge Jane Trichy Miazzo. Gimar, a Gimar, a former Hammond police officer, was part of a task force once led by 
by former U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration agent Chad Scott. Scott was sentenced to 13 years in August after convictions and multiple trials for stealing money from suspects. Boy, we've never heard that story before, right? Shake people down, steal their money and their drugs? Falsifying, oh, flying on records. Well, we've never heard that story before. And committing perjury. Oh, so he lied in court, too. The charges stem from an expansive federal investigation into misconduct claims that had surrounded Scott for much of his 17-year career, even as he made major drug busts. Jamar was convicted with Scott at one of those trials earlier this year in what prosecutors described as a long-running scheme to steal money and property from suspects they arrested. Records show he was sentenced on October 20th with a recommendation that the Federal Bureau of Prisons hold him at a facility as close to his family as possible. He was also ordered to pay restitution of $500 to one of his victims. Why not put him where they put him? They don't give us that kind of, uh, you know, if you got to go to federal prison, are they going to give you special treatment? Are they going to send you to the one nearby so that your family can uh, ride their bike and see you? This is reported on 1010winds.com, I believe it is, on audacity.com. And it reads, and this is dated, uh, can't see the date on it, but I know it's around the end of October here. And it reads as follows, off-duty NYPD officer charged with punching boyfriend during dispute on Queens Street. Now, I'm not sure if this is a female punching a male or a male punching a male. There's the story. All right, let's find out. Uh, officials, officials were arrested. An off-duty NYPD officer early Tuesday accused of punching his boyfriend. Uh-oh. Punching his boyfriend. During a dispute on a Queen Street, authorities said Officer Ashley... Pubil, Pubil, P-U-B-I-L, 40, and his boyfriend were arguing near the corner of 91st Street and 3rd, 31st Street in Jackson Heights about 2.50 a.m., police said. According to officials, Pubil then allegedly punched his boyfriend's face, who <laughs> refused medical attention on the scene. Pubil was arrested in charge of assault and harassment, his raiment, blah, blah, blah. So I guess we have two male, gay male couple here, and they got a little tissy, and one punched the other. Not doing too good over there in, uh, with the NYPD and uh, couples having little problems. This one is reported on October 29, 2021, and this is on, excuse me, J-Lo, J-Lo, P. Jalopnik. It's J L O P N I K dot com. And it reads as follows. Right here in New Jersey, no less, the capital of all the, ba all the blue zero heroes. Two New Jersey cops were arrested for stealing bikes. The officers were caught on surveillance videos stealing bikes from a nearby city. There you go. All right, let's find out. I have not read the story, so let's see what it says. Uh, local New Jersey news outlets report that two police officers from Lower Township, New Jersey, were caught stealing bikes in Cape May City, New Jersey. No one knows why, because no agency is talking. The two officers caught on surveillance video on October 8, 2021. Images from the video show two officers in plain clothes as if they are off duty. For some reason, around 10.30 p.m., they decide to approach a, boat, a bike rack and steal a couple of bikes. Initially, local police asked for the public's help in identifying the individuals, but after an investigation by the Cape May Police Department, oops, those are one of ours. Shh, not to be seen here, folks. <coughs> uh... The men were identified as being two police officers from nearby Lower Township Police Department, just four miles from Cape May. During the initial investigation, video surveillance was obtained to pick two males, removing the bicycles, and leaving the area. These actors were identified as Eric Campbell and Austin Craig, who are both employed as police officers of the Lower Township Police Department. 
The two men were a, uh, were arrested. The case was sent over to the county prosecutor's office. Charges were filed on both for fourth degree crime of theft. Under the state's code, these charges are a felony. If the property is taken, it was valued between 200 and 500, a weird area of value. And if convicted, a bald man could face a year and a half in jail and a $10,000 fine, but we know that will never happen. They'll never see a day in jail. But there are cops, so they'll probably be back to work. <laughs> you, know, you got that right. As to why they did what they did, no one knows. To make matters worse, the departments are being tight left. That's how it always is. They have no problem. If you got caught stealing those bikes, say you and your friend went out and stole a bicycle, and you got caught, they'd have no problem releasing a... a, a a statement to the public with your name and your address and your picture and everything, where you work and everything about you, they'd have no problem doing that, trying to embarrass you. But when it's one of their own, mom's the word. This is reported October 28th, 2021. This is on uh, yahoo.com and it reads as follows. Actually, it's, uh, it's from USA. I, I'm, I stand corrected there. USA.com. Uh, Diane X. NY cop who for decades evaded. What did he evade? Did he evade rape? Did he evade drug charges? Or did he evade child sex abuse? Which one do you think it is? That's right, the same one I'm thinking of. He evaded the uh, child sex abuse trial. Uh, oh, let me read it again. Dying ex NY cop who for decades evaded child sex abuse trial. Arrested on felony charges. And there he is. There's the old guy right there. I wouldn't feel sorry for him. A former New York police officer who for decades has delayed facing justice over allegations that he repeatedly raped and molested his daughter, his daughter's 12-year-old friend, was arrested in Florida on charges related to the case. Law enforcement officials arrested Leonard Forte, who is now 80, at his home in LaBelle, Florida, on October 18th. Forte, former Suffolk County District Court Attorney's Office detective, faces two felony charges in Florida on accusations of using the ID of another person without consent and the use of a two-way communication device to facilitate a felony. The arrest warrant was based on probable cause affidavit submitted by a Florida Department of Law Enforcement Special Agent who was assigned to assist the Vermont Attorney General's Office on the pending criminal prosecution of Forte. A jury in Vermont in 1988 found Forte guilty of three counts of sexual assault alleged to have occurred during a family ski vacation. Forte, who was 54 at the time, faced up to 60 years in prison. The judge tossed the verdict. However, prosecutors strongly disagreed with the move and planned a retrial. Before it could begin, Forte persuaded prosecutors to delay the retrial because he said he had a medical condition that was likely meant he would soon be dead. It was a claim he repeated for the next 25 years. A US, USA Today investigation 29 revealed that Vermont prosecutors had mishandled the case, likely the oldest open prosecution which the defendant is not a fugitive, and exposed Forte's dubious claim about his health. Reporters used public records and social media posts from Forte's family members to show he was not receiving round-the-clock medical care and frequently traveled around the country, including within 200 miles of the Vermont courthouse, to which he said his illness was too severe for him to travel. Vermont, Vermont's Attorney General Office re revived the case against Forte after the USA Today report. The probable cause affidavit stemming from Forte's recent arrest details how officials in Vermont request assistance from Florida law enforcement and how the agent gathered information against Forte using cell phone records, surveillance, and search warrants at Forte's home in September. The resulting felony charges in Florida concern Forte submitting to the Vermont court duplicate. Updated letters from his former physician stating he was unable to travel and testify because of his medical condition. The Vermont Attorney General's Office has suspected Forte had filed the same letter in 2016-2019. Forte made two or more contradictory statements in court 
that the physician signed the letter was still his doctor in 2019, that he had sent him the letter, blah, blah. Well, you got an old man here who molested his daughter's friend and got away with it for quite some time. I'd say now that he's going to go to jail, they should take his pension and give his pension payment to the girl that he violated. This one's reported on October 29th. 2021. It's on thestate.com. Ex-cop charged with assaulting motorists during a recent low county traffic stop. Wow, what a surprise. Really, people. How often do we hear about a cop assaulting a, mo assaulting a motorist that he stops? This is just so... No doubt this is an isolated incident. And by the way, I'm going to send an email to Webster's Dictionary so they can redefine the word uh, isolated. And here's the story right there. All right, let's find out what he did. A former Somerville police officer has been arrested on charges that he assaulted a motorist during a traffic stop two months ago. Robert Barano, 37, is accused of dragging a car driver out of the seat, out of the vehicle, and hitting him. They got violence problems. They... I, how many times did I said this, folks? Let's go, just go back in my old bit. You know, violence is their way of resolving problems. I don't know if he's a big guy or not. I'm assuming he's a big guy. And as we all know, big guys use violence to solve a problem. And when you don't act a certain way, violence is what they're going to re, uh, resort to. And if you're not kissing their ass and sucking up to their ego and their authority, this is what happens when you get one of these sociopath heroes. The driver, oh, here we go. The driver had refused to exit the vehicle after the police officer failed to explain why the car had been stopped. Okay, that's reasonable. But what he should have done there at this point, maybe his request to the supervisor. Always request the supervisor if you've got an idiot cop on your hands. Uh, according to an arrest warrant, the warrant said the victim was struck in the face with a closed fist. The traffic stop resulted from a narcotic surveillance operation, the warrant said. Barno, who worked for the Somerville Police Department at the time of the incident, the warrant said. The state law enforcement division arrested Barno Friday. SLED spokesman Tommy Crosby, Chris Crosby said Barno has been released on bond, a law enforcement official in Dorchester County said. He is charged with third-degree assault and battery. Ever to reach Barnall or locate an attorney representing him were unsuccessful Friday. Well, no doubt, since they're going to arrest him, or have arrested him, lawsuits coming. That's what's happening. Once again, taxpayers are going to pay for bad cop behavior. I say whoever signed off on this cop should have to pay a portion of that lawsuit. What do you think, huh?